what, what the mate is talking about. What's up, family? Former NFL quarterback Michael Vick fixed his mouth to say that Colin Kaepernick should cut his afro off if he wants to work in the NFL again. In fact, these are his exact words. First thing we've got to get Colin to do is cut his hair. He said this on an appearance on Fox Sports 1 Speak for Yourself. Listen, I'm not up here trying to be politically correct. Even if he puts cornrows in there, I don't think he should represent himself in that way, wearing the afro. Just the hairstyle, just go clean cut, you know. Why not? You're already dealing with a lot. He said that the former 49ers starter's goal should be to look presentable. Presentable to who, motherfucker? See, this is the type of shit that makes people look at black folks and say, man, they are really lost. Why in the hell does Colin have to change his hairstyle to play football? Michael Vick, you ain't said nothing about Clay Matthews' long ass, wild ass jungle hat. You ain't said nothing, and nobody else ain't said nothing about it. If they did say something about it, they said how stylish it is. Oh, he's got that swag. He cool. Bro, look at him. One of the weirdest hairstyles, best hairstyles. But Colin has an afro. And see, an afro is symbolic of blackness. And see, so many of you so-called black people are trying to evade your blackness. You're trying to run away from the blackness, but you can't because it's everywhere you go. And no matter how much you kiss that ass of that white oppressor, your ass is never going to be fully accepted. Let me tell you something about people in general, nobody respects a person who tries to act like something they're not. You're thinking that these white people who hate your guts, that hate black people, I'm talking about the racist ones, you're thinking that because you kiss ass or you shoot down another black person, you disparage a black person Somehow, they're going to like you. They're going to accept you. They're, not, they're never going to like you. They're never going to accept you. They are going to tolerate you. And they're going to use you to do their dirt. The same way that they use that clown that you were up there talking to, Jason Whitlock, that self-hating, self aggrandizing clown. This dude is, he is the lap dog. He is the sucker, the yes boy, the chump that they sent out on the dummy missions to say the things that they can't say because they're going to be considered as racist. So they get him to regurgitate white supremacist talking points. And now they got you, Michael Vick. I feel like a damn fool for riding for your ass when you got caught up in that dog case. Everybody was riding for you in the hood because we understood what you was going through. We knew you was being railroaded. We knew that it was no way possible that nobody does three years for fighting dogs, let alone a high-paid celebrity, any celebrity. But they made an example out of you. They wanted to make an example out of you. And they stole your prime. They took your money, your livelihood. They destroyed your family. They destroyed your name. They took your freedom. 
lock you up for three years for fighting some damn dogs when they actually put dogs to sleep every single day. And they gave you three years. Didn't even have evidence. Didn't really even have evidence that you actually even fought dogs. And you say you're not trying to be politically correct. But when you got caught up in that case, I distinctively remember you acting like a choir boy. Boy, you was quiet. You didn't have nothing to say. That should have been the time that you wasn't trying to be politically correct if you want to know the truth. I mean, if somebody did something like that to me and I felt like I was innocent, I felt like I was being wronged, I would have stood for mine. But you, on the other hand, you was quiet. You church bar quiet. And you had nothing to say. Not all of a sudden, and then you were fighting for your freedom. Not all of a sudden, you got something to say. Not all of a sudden, you're not trying to be politically correct. You're not trying to be politically correct because it's, well, you say you're not trying to be politically correct because you know that it actually is politically correct in mainstream society to bash Colin Kaepernick. You know it's cool. Massa has given you instructions and told you it's cool. Jason Whitlock, one of the clowns, you know, one of the lap dogs for Massa. He's told you, man, it's money and cooning, man. It's money, it's money over here, man. Come on over here, Mike. I got you. I take care of you, man. Look here, man. Don't worry about them, man. You're going to be good. I don't know what happened to you, dude. You want to clown Colin Kaepernick because it's in vogue. It's cool. Ain't nobody going to trip if you clown him. Not the people in the high places. Not the people that got the keys to the doors that you want to walk in. See, now it's going to be very interesting to see what happens with you over the next few months. Because they'll probably try to give you a job. That's what happens when you coon, you sell out. When you throw your community under the bus, they reward you. If your community is the black community. Now, any other community ain't having it. You can't do that in the Hispanic community, in the, the, the Asian community, the white community. You can't do that in no other community and get away with it except the black community. When black people see you, they need to whoop on your ass. We need to stop allowing these coons to have safe travel. On site, their asses need to be dealt with. And I mean all of them. All of them. It doesn't matter what their stature is. Don't matter what level they own. Don't matter how much money they got in their pockets. We need to stop allowing these sucker safe patches. And it doesn't matter if they show up at this spot or that spot, it don't have to be, they don't have to be in the hood to get it. They could be anywhere and get it. This dude, Michael Vick, you ought to be ashamed of yourself, man. You should be ashamed of yourself, your friends, your family members, everybody. They should be ashamed of you. Let, let me tell you what else this fool said. I just think perception and image is everything. This is not the Colin Kaepernick that we've known since he entered the National Football League. I'm just going off my personal experiences. Listen, I love the guy to death, but I want him to also succeed on and off the field. This has to be a start for him. It's not about selling out. When you're good and you're playing great, then you're going to be wanted. People are going to want to sign you, going to want to see you play. Okay. So I'm confused. Is it about his production or is it about his hairstyle? Because last time I checked, an afro can't throw no motherfucking football. 
ain't seen nobody in all the years I've been living and watching football throw a fucking football with a motherfucking hairdo. I have not seen that yet. That would be a new one. In that case, Colin should be signed immediately because people would pay to come see that shit. He's talking about he need to cut his afro like somehow the afro determines the trajectory of the football. Like, oh, the football going to flatten out fast. It's going to lose the, the air from underneath it. Uh, it's going to go to the left or go to the right or, or, or dead out or something because Colin Kaepernick got a damn afro. Man, you know, do you know what you sound like? You prop see, here's the deal too. See, I used to think you were quiet. You just quiet dude. But really, you was being quiet because you really didn't want anybody to see how dumb you were. And it's an old saying that it's better to be dumb and quiet and have no one to know than to open your mouth and remove all doubt. Now, I'm paraphrasing that, but you get what I'm talking about. He opened his mouth and removed all doubt. Michael Vick, you a big dummy. You Fred Sanford, Sanford and Sons, Lamont, big dummy. You sound like a fool. How many times does black people have to try to conform to make white people comfortable. Why we always got to change our motherfucking looks? Why we got to change our hair? Why we got to change the way we style our hair to make white folks comfortable? When is the last time white folks changed their style of hair to make Black folks comfortable. And you want to know why, you wonder why some people in the white community feel superior. Because you're constantly trying to assimilate. You're constantly trying to be something that you're not. And no matter how hard you try, they will never accept your dirty, rusty ass. You're still going to be who you are. No matter what you do, they're never going to respect that. Nobody respects that. No man respects another man who sells out, throw his community under the bus to assimilate. You'll never get that respect from real men. You won't even get that from the people that you're trying to impress, the people who's pockets you're trying to stick your hand into because it's very clear that you're trying to get to that white dollar that's very clear and you're using those talking points that some of these type of people love to hear Jason Whitlock he's a motherfucking career coon so I'm sure he gave you a lot of advice on what you need to do hey coon one on one throw the black community under the bus coon one on one any prominent black person who's doing something for the black community or who's doing well for himself and hasn't sold out, turn against him and make sure that you disparage him at every turn. That's Coon one-on-one. -on -one. Boom! It's the elephant in the room. Nah, that's a motherfucking coon. Blacks been free since Lincoln got wasted, but some of these niggas still on the plantation. Listen up, Charles Barkley. You light skinned, but they still calling you a darkie. The only reason that they put the mic in your face is so you can do their dirt and talk down on your race. Pushing the narrative of white comfortability is very disheartening, especially for a black person. We got 30 some, 40, 50, 60 year old black people still trying to assimilate. Let me let you in on something. You ain't gonna never ever be accepted by someone who don't want to accept you who will never accept you 
They may tolerate you. Your dumb ass is stupid enough to believe that they're around you because they like you. They're around you because you serve them a certain purpose. Whatever that is, I have no clue. But it is amazing how every other ethnicity can wear their hair any way they want to wear their hair. And nobody says anything. But black people are the only group of people who have the most unique hair that has to assimilate. In a culture where we're always talking about be unique, be unique, be unique. We are the most unique. Why the fuck would we change? Makes no sense. If you can throw that ball, catch that ball, run that ball, run those numbers, figure out that, that fucking code, punch those numbers, hit that data, sell that property, whatever it is. If you can perform, if you can put money in people's pockets, they're going to figure out a way to just ride with your hairstyle. Trust me. They're not going to fucking fire you if you can perform. Your hair has absolutely nothing to do with your performance. Don't let nobody fool you with that stupid ass, silly ass talking. I'm going to leave y'all with this. It's amazing how if you're black and you're ostracized by the majority, all you have to do is disparage a black person, disparage the black community. Then all of a sudden, all of your past mistakes are forgiven. All of a sudden, the same people who ostracize you are talking you up, saying how they agree with you and how they love you and how you're right. Why do you think that is? They don't respect you. They tolerate you. Michael Vick, for jumping on that coon train. Your ass deserved to be pimp slap. Your mama should be ashamed. Your daddy should have pulled out. No more talk. What, what the ladies talking about? Yeah. Order, Texas.